So hello, everybody. My name is David Bankston. I'm president of the Everglades region of Southwest Florida, who just was named region of the year, by the way. And I also serve as national EV coordinator for all of PCA. So today I'm joined with Calvin Kim from Porsche Cars North America. Calvin, please introduce yourself. Hey, hello, everybody. My name is Calvin Kim. I'm uh, with Porsche Cars North America. I'm the product spokesperson for the four-door model line. So that's the Cayenne, the Macan, the Panamera, and the Taycan. And I also do a lot of the tech uh, uh, tech stuff. So things like the induction charging for the upcoming Cayenne, for example, or e-fuels or CarPlay. Wow. Um, it's a quite a wide variety of subjects. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, everyone's like, uh, oh, don't you guys uh don't you want to do more with other like motorsports or anything no i like being where i'm at um the four-door model lines are intriguing to me because it's not it's it's difficult it's hard and i like that um but what gives me confidence is when you talk to the owners of the cars and they're just tickle pink i mean from their perspective whether it's a cayenne or a 911 a boxer spider or a macan or a you know whatever it is they understand the whole porsche philosophy and what it means to have a car that's a porsche first not just yeah. uh this or that it's it's what does it mean to be a porsche philosophically and then how do you translate that into a tangible product that you and i are driving you know so that's i love it if you're a Porsche enthusiast like I am, I invite you to join our community. Just head over to PCA.org and get ready to take your ownership experience to the next level. We'd appreciate it if you give us a like, comment, and subscribe. We've got lots of Porsche content coming your way. Now back to the video. Well, I had uh, my wife just sort of, like my wife and I just got a new Macan EV. The, oh, congrats. Uh, the four, and oh my God, that thing is amazing. And I'm going to tell you that MBE platform is next gen. Yeah. It's quiet, uh, stable, is super smooth. Bumps are just like you feel them, but they go away. There's no rattle. I mean, I'm I'm really impressed what they did with that new platform. I'm very happy with that too. And that's what I'm in now. Um, I just got out of a Cross Trismo mm -hmm. into a Macan 4 as well. Uh the Aventure in Green, beautiful color. Uh I got uh the uh, 21 inch wheels for a little bit more sidewall um yeah i mean the, the car and that's the thing is if you put it in normal mode and you just commute you're like well what's so porsche about this mm -hmm. well yeah it's got the customization mm -hmm. and the comfort um the tech mm -hmm. um, i got the full tech package i got the passenger screen and the augmented mm -hmm. reality heads-up display and uh my wife is sold on that by the way uh, she's like, if it doesn't have augmented, I, I don't want it. <laughs> um, but uh, but that's, that's the thing stuff. is, even the Macan 4, even sure. the entry level all-wheel drive Macan, you put that yeah. in sport mode, mm -hmm. and it rips, man. It's, yeah. it's and that's when you real oh, it's still it, it's in there, and uh, that's what I kind of like about the Macan is it really spreads the difference between right. like that normal everyday and the sporty driving, right. you know, in a car like a, a 911, let's say that right. gap is pretty small. Yep. Uh, but in the Macan, it's you can put your mother in law in the backseat, right. and she's not going to complain about ride comfort or harshness. Yep. Um, but when you're by yourself, and you're up in the North Georgia woods, put awesome. in sport mode. And, well, yeah, we love it. we're gonna probably put a 10 on it and do camping. I mean, it, we just love it. It is that's awesome. It's an amazing vehicle. Okay, yeah. we've got sidetracked. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> with the so Calvin, with the recent advancements in interoperability around Tesla and the Tesla supercharging network and Porsche, um, I get a whole lot of emails now and what it means and some clarity and please, where's my adapter and all kinds of stuff. Um, but so to address these questions, um, let me just kind of go through a list in here and then sure. if we can get some answers out to the uh, PCA folks. So first question, um, which models uh, are currently or will soon be compatible with the Tesla Charger network? Um, yeah, obviously it's going to be the Cayenne Electric um, and the Taycan um, in all versions, all variants. And the Macan. Uh, and the Macan, yep. And Macan, yes. Okay, so all three. Uh, well, not the uh, gas Macans, of course, well, but yeah, the electric okay, Macans, yeah, yeah. The Taycan, the Macan, and the Cayenne EV. Yes. Uh, well, the Cayenne EV is not out yet, so we're okay. still... I mean, we can make inferences. Inference. Yes. Okay. Uh, yep. But uh, yeah, uh, when we release that and uh, we launch that later this year, uh, 
Yeah. You'll get the full skinny. We'll get there. All right. Yeah. So um, what hardware will be required uh, in order to charge in a Tesla network? Um, from our side, all you need is the uh, Porsche approved adapter, our, the Porsche Nax adapter. We announced that, oh, it's been a little over a couple months ago now. Um, in order to use not just Tesla superchargers, but other charging networks that have NAX plugs on it. From our side, uh, you know, we talked to CPOs, charge point operators, and yeah, let's be let's be let's just put it all put it all out on the table. The NAX plug geometry is the plug geometry that's going to take us to the next level. Um, and so we want to make sure that our car, current cars that have the CCS ports are compatible going forward, you know, I mean, so that way your Macan, you can still drive it, charge it and get all of its performance, uh, charging performance well into the future. And so that's why we had to make our own um, a, a DC adapter. Yeah. So other than the adapter, which is literally just this big, it's, no big yep. deal. it's a little bitty thing and you plug it in the middle. Other than the adapter, there's no disadvantage per se to someone who buys a car today that has uh, the old, you know, uh, plug in it as opposed to the Nax. Um, what is the J? It's not the J112, it's the uh, oh, well, it'd be uh, well, it's called CCS, uh, CCS, CCS. CCS yeah, the yeah, CCS Except, right. Right. right, right, yeah. And yeah. I, I would totally agree with you, David. I, from from my side, I don't even, I, you know, during our testing, I've gone to both uh, Nax stations from different CPOs and CCS stations from CPOs, uh, and you just, it's just part of you know, like, uh, you know, which from for the gas card for the gas ice guys, uh, you know, which gas card do I use at which gas station? It's like that. It's yeah. not like, oh, why can't I just use this one gas card at every gas? It's no, just you're at a whatever. Um, and from my perspective, yeah, it would. I get people's apprehension because they right. haven't done it. Right. But I don't even notice it. Like, it's yeah. just okay, I'm here. And from my perspective, having the adapter just really opens the possibilities. You know, yes. you can charge just about at any DC fast charging location now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which Whereas is, before. Uh, yeah. Amazing. So you yeah. know what? I liken it to, um, you know, at home, you've got a three prong plug and sometimes you have a two prong. Yeah. Sometimes you have a three prong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, and for, and and for me, it's more, right. And David, I'm, tr uh, it's true. It's, uh, yeah. It's, it's like, like trifling stuff too. Like for example, yeah. I'll go to a, I I went to an Iona station down in South Georgia, and you know they they split the cabinets up, CCS cabinets and Nax cabinets, and well, guess what? The CCS there's one CCS uh, cabinet, but there's two cars next to it, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to exert too much effort backing in. Whereas the Nax side was too wide open, so guess what? I just went to the Nax side. Yeah. I don't care. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's an important point because members yeah. say, oh, my God, my car is going to be outdated. It's got the old plug. No, yeah. no, it is absolutely just fine. Electricity finds its way. You do not have to worry about your car not being updated the, to the current. That's right. The, the key isn't so much the plug geometry. It's the software that <laughs> does the authentication. Yeah. And the important point for all of us to know is that the next authentication process is identical to CCS. And so really that you know that's the confidence, right? So no matter what, even you know 20 years from now, someone's going to be making an adapter and the, yeah, the yeah. and the authentication protocol is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. So that should give you the confidence. So is there any software needed today that's not been like downloaded through over the air that someone has to worry about in order to, to get to a, a Tesla charger? Nope, no additional software. Um, the ones, it, you know, now obviously, if you want to be able to navigate st straight sure. to NAX compatible stations, yes, you will need to update your nav. Uh, but as far as authentication goes or usability, uh, a lot of a lot of our customers don't even use the built-in navigation. They use uh, Apple Maps or or, yeah. or Google Maps uh, through CarPlay or Android Auto. And if that's the case, you might not ever realize what you need the car will just work uh you know but there's some 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 differences here um whereas on the ccs side uh you can use the my porsche app uh up until very recently you had to use the separate tesla app to authenticate yeah, one of my but next now questions. you don't and now you don't today now you don't now you can use the my porsche app to okay. authenticate the tesla superchargers now 
So all we have to do is update the My Porsche app. Everything That's right. Work, authentication is now in the app. Because yep. I did a, chest, a Tesla charge and I had to use the Tesla app. And it was like, hey, yep. you know, yeah. okay, yeah. very cool. Um, so what charging speed can we expect? You know, it varies per car. Tycons sometimes, especially, might, you know, you know, yeah. like, like 50 kilohertz or 50. Uh, so what do, kilowatts? Yeah, kilowatts. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so and so the good news is for uh, all of our Macan owners, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it does, that car already has the uh, voltage adjusting system built into the battery management system. And so your 800 volt packs turn into okay. two 400 volt packs. Mm -hmm. And on those cars, it, it'll peak out about 130, 135, depending on your voltage, right? And if you're really empty, it'll take a little, it'll take a few uh, seconds for it to get to peak uh, to get that voltage, but uh, for more, more or less 135. And it's a nice flat curve. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're really only spending maybe three or four more minutes at the charger, uh, versus using a CCS 800 volt native system on the Tycon side. If you've got a J12, you've got a built-in voltage, a booster there. Um, and so your peak's going to be 150, yeah. very similar to the Macan. If you're like, you know, down 2%, 3% SOC, yeah. yes, you're not going to see 150 right away. It'll probably be, it'll probably start in the one thirties and then clots way up to 150, but likewise, very nice and flat. Yeah. Now our J1 one customers, uh, that's from the 2019, 2020 to 2024, 2025, sometime, yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to, that's where we have the most uh, difficulty because if you did not get a DC booster, Right. You're only going to get 50 kilowatts. Now, as someone who's had a Tesla, a, a Tycon without the booster during uh, our initial testing, I would rather have 50 than, than nothing. Yes. But, yes. but, but certainly the booster cars do have a bit better quality of, of, right. of life there, uh, quality experience. Um, all that means, though, is you know, for those customers with the non-boosted uh, Tycons, uh -huh. is it really worth it to buy the adapter? Uh -huh. You know, because I know on my PCM, when I'm searching for uh, charging stations, usually I'm it's 250 plus. Right. But, you know, if you drop it down uh, to 150, you see a lot more places that you can charge. And so, you know, you have to make some tactical decisions on your on your navigation there for that. Right. I do find it is worthwhile. Um, 50 is way better than 12 or yep. or 5.6, which you get yep. in a hotel. You know, I mean, you you don't know. You know, you might pull in a hotel, think you're going to charge overnight. Then you get, you take off in the morning and there's nothing there. Well, yeah. I'm, what, there's a Tesla right down the corner. I'll go there and wait 20 minutes. No, but no big deal. Exactly. No, no I'm I'm right there with you. Yeah, I've been iced many times in hotels. So You know the story, you know, and yeah. you don't even get a charge. Okay, yeah. so you talked a little bit about um, my Porsche app. So now you're saying the that it's all in there, it's all ready mm -hmm. to go, and that update is that uh, did that just come out like in the last couple of weeks, or when did that update come out? Last couple of days um, mm -hmm. for the people that are using uh, the my Porsche app on a consistent basis. You should have okay. gotten a pop up this week stating that uh, the, the there's native NAX in the yeah. app so and there's now just a a, sl a little switch when yes. you go to your charging map you go to your filters where you can select which networks and plug types or whatever and there will be a, a thing right there that says uh not only next plugs because remember mm -hmm. just because it's next doesn't mean it's also tesla you can right. you can use a next plug at iana or at other places um or you and so that's why there's two two switches, two one, switches. For Nax, one for Nax and one for Tesla supercharger. For Tesla supercharger. Okay, that's right. Okay. And have you had any issues, or is it just smooth sailing at some of these other third party uh, Max chargers? Because I haven't tried any of those specifics. From my perspective, I have not had any hiccups at all. Um, it's just like using EA or any of any of the other legacy uh, CPOs uh, right. through the app. But you have to use those are not in the app, are they? They are. They are. The third, oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. The networks are in the app now. Yeah, okay. and okay. so that's that. You know, the whole reason why we uh, did it this way is yes, uh, it's. I know that there is a little bit of a learning curve for a lot of new EV people, um, but our philosophy was let's try to simplify this, and instead of having you know fifteen apps on your phone uh, that you have to update credit cards or whatever. Um, why not just have it all in one spot? And so we try to incorporate as many CPUs as possible. We're adding them, you know, as, as fast as we can um, so that you can get charging 
through one app, just through the My Porsche app. And so that takes a lot of the trepidation, a lot of the fear um, out of that. Now, if you're an advanced EV driver and you want that control, you want to be able to use um, uh, bed, uh, you know, a lot of CPOs offer better rates uh, mm -hmm. based off of an, uh, you know monthly or annual memberships. Right, right, if right. you're that, if you're that top tier, you know, right. you then yeah, you can branch out and use the individual right. apps. But you know, for me, I you know, I most of my driving is local and so i'm not really road tripping that often i don't mind paying a few extra cents per kilowatt hour for the convenience of just having it in one app um you know nine i would say 99 percent of my driving is local and i charge at home yeah. or at the office and so yeah it's i i value convenience over cost perfect do you see any um like do you have any discount so when now that the tesla you know is embedded in the Porsche my Porsche app is it the same price not you know what's the what's is there any discount uh I've, at the moment we're working on the possibility of that um as we go through this and we see how people utilize the app right. and um you know see and our, our the cpo see what the utilization is from porsche customers right. there's opportunity there but at the moment um all the pricing is handled directly by the cpo themselves um and they charge what they want to charge and so it's up to you to kind of go into the my Porsche app and look on that that second page that gives you the per kilowatt hour pricing, uh, but yeah, no, we're we're working on we're, we're always know, talking to CPU. Yeah, you know, I felt this, like if you have enough drivers and enough, you know, you know, a critical mass, you can then yeah. say, you know what, guys, cut us some slack, right? Exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Okay, Calvin, thank you very much for your time. I think uh, I know our PCA members will really appreciate. Uh, the time you've spent answering their questions and uh, you know we'll keep tracking here if, if anyone wants to get in touch with me you can get me at ebcoordinator at pca.org and let's just keep the dialogue open so we look forward to some of the next ones I am looking forward to that tie-in release with that inductive charging that's going to be pretty amazing so looking forward to that thanks, thanks David okay cheers